Hi. So it's been a really, really long time uh, since I made a video for YouTube. Too long, you could say. It's been so long that I wasn't even sure what kind of video to make uh, to come back. So this is going to be that video. Since I've been gone, the channel, when I left, the channel had around 5,000 subscribers. And now we're hovering around 20,000. So that's a really big number. You know, it's uh, intimidating, to be honest. I'm sure a lot of it is is like, you know, bots and, you know, random subscribes. But definitely, that's indicative that there's a fair amount of people that are interested in that stuff, which is exactly why I made this channel to begin with. So I made this channel to really, first and foremost, kind of demystify making digital sculpts. And so, yeah, moving forward, I kind of want to do that same thing. I want this channel to be about making digital art. It's about making 3D models, about making characters. Uh, and that's kind of a big topic, but so I want to divide it in kind of two kinds of videos. One's going to be like the videos I was doing before, like time lapses. So essentially kind of like making ofs, you know, almost maybe like art vlogs. We'll see. And the other type of video is going to be tutorials. Uh, I've made maybe two tutorials on the channel so far and people like them and they're helpful and that's exactly what I want to do with the channel. So. So moving forward, I'm going to be making videos where I just make art and I kind of talk about that a little behind the scenes of of making stuff and then more specific videos that are tutorials on how to do something. So when it comes to tutorials, I kind of need your help. I don't know what to make. Uh, I've got a list of my own. I threw something out on Instagram and people send me good ideas. So I, I wrote those down. A lot of them are going to be game art related probably in the future. Uh, that is what I do professionally. But there's plenty of other things in terms of, you know, making models and making characters that I'd also like to do. Um, maybe ZBrush related stuff, fiber mesh, rendering, uh, videos on the game industry. All that said though, uh, I'm trying to come back. I guess this is the video where I come back. I just want to rip the band-aid off. So I'm just going to make something in ZBrush. Here we go. All right, so I thought the best thing to do would be to just make something in ZBrush. Try to make it real low stakes for me to just kind of break the ice on like, what do I make? And also being outside of work, I, I do want to make things that take relatively low amounts of time because professionally I do things that take weeks and months. So I want to do things uh, in one day sometimes, and this is going to be one of those things. And this is also insight into what I actually do. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do like a study. So I'm going to sculpt something based on this photograph, which I have pinned on my Pinterest page, along with a lot of other faces and uh, beautiful people, interesting looking people. So I'm going to start with a sphere in ZBrush and I'm going to Dynamesh it and we're going to start making this face. My goal ultimately with this is to create an image. Primarily that image is going to be for like you guys and the video and stuff. So we want to keep the stakes low. It's not about photorealism. It's not about making a production level piece. I'm also going to myself try to do some stuff with fiber mesh. I think that's an interesting part of this image. I think that would uh, round out the sculpt and also just give me more kind of hair you know, experience and practice. So again, this this whole point of doing a study like this is within a few hours, make something and then you move on. You know, it's not going to be the best thing ever made, but it's definitely going to take you through a process. You're going to get to experience the different parts of the workflow. At the end, you're going to have something that you're that you made and whether or not it's good, you get to move on and make other things. So this is about practice this is about improving. And also it's about just making stuff in ZBrush. So let's dive in and do it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do with my Dynamesh, I'm gonna set this real low. Let's just start at 32 right now. This is just a sphere from ZBrush. Turn on my X symmetry. I made it a poly mesh, and then we're gonna just start making it. So first we're gonna do our basic head shape. So in the beginning, I'm primarily gonna be using the move brush. I'm gonna make a basic shape of the bust, and then we can move on from there. Okay, so we just have a ball here. We're gonna stretch this out. Skull's a little bit longer. I also like doing my uh, transpose line. Just dynamesh right there. So let's pull out the neck too, why don't we? The goal here is to make your basic shape. So not at all concerned about likeness at this point. At this point, I'm trying to make a female shape. After you pull out, you know, big things like the neck right here, you're gonna have to re-dynamesh. Okay, just stretching something out to make it kind of more of a bust. 
this is a this is really for kind of presentation purposes and um, when you're doing your own warm up it's like for your own sanity really like if you want to do a floating head that's fine like neck only switching to my clay build up right now actually just to fill this in but we'll, we'll get more into clay build up in a second just making light indications right now of kind of the skull shape I can I can better see what's going on like where the shapes are and how they relate to each other kind of think my uh, skull might be a little too wide there Working on this side view again. You can see kind of how much time I'm spending. It's just a few minutes, but another thing is the skull is more wide in the back than the front. I'm going to pull out this nose mass here. I'm actually going to raise this up just a tad now. I'm going to go, I guess we can go to 64, so I'm going to double it. So it comes out like this. I'm going to rotate it out. And then there's this. Right when you start getting the other features, then you can kind of see how something's too wide. I'd say right now we got kind of a man vibe to our, our base here. So I'm going to try to like make these features a little more delicate. For me, it helps to get the uh, overall form here of the mouth, how it protrudes out, and then worry about the placement of the lips and stuff. Really gonna focus on the front view here. So not gonna spend too much time in the back of the skull and the ear. But you know, it is for your own practice. I'm trying to kind of set a time limit of a couple hours. Uh, might have to start speeding up and, and leaving things sketchy, which is fine. But this helps me just find the, the base mesh. So we've only used a couple brushes so far. Primarily we've been using the move brush. So I just push and pull, that's like the most common brush. I'm using my clay buildup brush right here too. That's my favorite brush for sculpting forms. You know, we can switch to the damn standard brush to make lines. And that's kind of it right now. Lots of smooth. So lots of move brush, lots of smooth brush. And then I'll use my clay buildup brush to, uh, you know, make forms. Kind of just define how things are flowing and stuff. So those are really the main brushes as I... Do the primary forms. You could also use snake hook mixed in with the move brush. Snake hook is like a much stronger move brush. Um, but right now I'm just trying to keep things delicate and precise while I put things in their place. So not too crazy in terms of brushes. Just trying to uh, do it bit by bit. All right, let's get some eyes in here. Boom! So just appended a sphere. Scale it down, and then uh, transparency helps out so that we can see how it relates to the skull. Trying to get the size of the eye right is pretty useful. Like as anatomically correct as we can. I mean, you know, we're not doctors right now, but we're trying to get it uh, pretty close. So if you have to look up some anatomy reference and scale of eyes, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna duplicate it right now. I'm gonna mirror it so that we have two here. So now we got two eyes. I'll turn on symmetry. That way, you know, we can position them together. It's a lot more natural to see that. Try to get the depth right, maybe like right here. The height might be a little low, but. So getting the eye size about right and the depth about right is really, really useful because it helps you build the forms around the eye. First of all, if you get the skull shape right of the cavity, then you kind of know where to put the eyeball. And then once you have an eyeball, you know how to lay down the lids. So it just helps with believability actually, because it's kind of a natural progression of sculpting kind of one thing after the other in the way that the eye is formed already. So kind of a little bit of an anatomy tip here. Get my mask so you can see. So if we're looking like right here where the corner of the mouth is, if you look at the corner of the mouth, that's it's about the tip of the eye. So for me, I think that means the eye needs to go a little deeper. Because I don't think my brow and my nose are that right, but my where my mouth would be here, we can kind of make a little mark here just so you can see. That's probably about where the corner of the mouth would be. So you can see there, still my eye might be a little bit too forward. Okay, there we go. Also might be a little low, could be a little far. Uh, the corner of the mouth right here. From the front view, lines up to the middle of the eye just about. Usually on the inside between the pupil and the iris, about the midpoint there. So to me that means the eyes are a little wide still. Why don't we jump into our eyes right here and we will rotate them forward, right? So now the topology is pointing forward and we can easily make an eye shape or an iris shape. 
Why don't we do a convexed eye? So I'll just hit divide one time, why not? We'll do that, looks like I can go more intense. It's about half the width of the eye. I might change my focal shift a little bit. Getting a little nerdy now, kind of overdoing it, but honestly, eyes really help the character. So I'm, I'm kind of down to do it. Just gonna hit it with smooth a little bit. Okay. Now the thing about eyes, uh, one little tip that I'm always sharing with people because it's easy to forget and it makes a big difference is if we point the eyes out a little bit like this, we need to rotate them outwards, you know, between four and five degrees or something. So our eyes are actually like a little wall-eyed so that we can see more, you know, peripheral. Uh, because we're working on computers, a mistake that's super common is people will make eyes pointed perfectly straight forward and then the character ends up looking a little cross-eyed and you're not exactly sure why. Also, like I said before, having an eyeball in there, and in this case, we're also putting the cornea lump. That's gonna help us get a good highlight when we're checking for likeness. But also that bump kind of dictates the eyelid. Eyelids kind of sit over that cornea bump. So we need to rotate it out just a little bit. Let me just really quickly see if the other thing, once I use this gizmo, if I hit this button right here, it goes to the mesh center, which is what I want. I wanna rotate it from the center. And then when I rot rotate out, I can actually see the degrees. So why don't we go like three degrees and then I'm gonna get my transpose line back because I, I like my transpose line. So I'm a G like that. All right, so now we got this funny looking eye and the depth we're gonna need to do again. There we go. Now what's happening here is like when I scale, you see how it's going to the middle point? I can hit this little local symmetry button that lets me scale, you know, just to the object. Like a little bit right there, and then I guess we need to go up a little bit. Okay, cool. So now before we leave the eye, I'm gonna put on the toy plastic material. So I'm gonna put the toy plastic material on. And we'll just fill that. Then I can turn off MRGB, and I can go back to my basic material. Then we can jump back over to this. So this way you can see, because I have a mound, the highlight on the eye is a little bit more predictable. We're getting that dot where we think we're gonna get it. All right, so now before I go up too high, uh, you know, we're still relatively low. It's getting a little bit dense. Um, and you know, the more dense we make something, the more resistance there's gonna be. Uh, for more info on Dynamesh and ZebraMesh, click this button. And then I wanna work on the face um, expression and we're gonna finish the sculpt in that context. That's part of this kind of exercise is that we want to break away from the old, from the traditional boring face and, uh, and we're gonna work a little bit on the expression. That lets us get a little more familiar with, with character and emotion that way and it lets us improve our sculpting skills because we have a little bit more of a challenge, more forms to deal with, and overall we get to learn more about the human face and it's a little bit more interesting. So instead of making a face and then pushing it into position. We already made kind of our base, and now we're gonna start to make that expression and refine the sculpt from there. So looking over at my reference, why don't we get some lines to help us? The upper, lid, the upper lip I know is gonna raise just a little bit. Let's start speeding things up a little bit here. We'll, uh, we'll do a quick little time lapse just to show things, uh, you know, blocking more things out with clay tubes. Uh, plenty of move brush, did some inflate for the nose and the mouth. So just helping things take shape. So we're definitely on our way to a, a happy hobbit, you know, but that's not what we're going for. So we're gonna have to keep working on this. So just making progress slowly but surely, um, smoothing things out. In this stage can be a lot of Dynamesh uh, after I make big changes, refining the form of the nose here, trying to find that peak. And you can see my area of focus kind of bouncing around. That helps me from becoming bored, and it also just helps me move the face kind of forward at once instead of focusing too long on one part. Uh, you see me heavy-handedly laying down kind of anatomy and landmarks too with clay tubes and damp standard that I can refine more later. Okay, so this smile is really coming up all the way in here too. Coming up underneath the eye. A lot of scrunching actually here. I'm drawing kind of a harsh line here. You're probably like, what are you doing? But um, you go, you'll see it'll, it'll quickly wash away. 
I'm going to speed this up once again, kind of wrap up the uh, initial lay-in of all these uh, forms. So hopefully you can tell a lot of heavy-handedness at this stage. Uh, so I'm using a lot of clay tubes. That's that's my main tool for doing forms. And after I lay in, you know, generally where I think uh, form transitions are going to be, then, uh, then I'll spend some time, you know, um, working on the volume. And then lots of smooth brush too. So... Trying to keep it loose, you know, trying to just make those changes and, and not keep anything too precious right now. I, I'm also kind of aware that I'm going to be doing a lot of tweaking. So that's I think that's just natural, especially when it comes to faces. So I think it's it's more important to lay down all the elements, all the forms, all the landmarks, and, uh, and just keep refining. That's going to be most of my time spent is just refining everything that I've already laid in. Also, you know, in this in this case, I'm trying to find that expression. I think pretty early on we're going to we're going to figure out if it feels like a smiling girl, like a genuine happy smile, kind of a laugh or uh or if it's just feeling, you know, stilted. Uh doing a little bit of wrinkles too. Um not necessarily final stuff though. You can see just by laying down the strips uh with clay tubes I can kind of get a sense of where wrinkles would be and where the skin would be bunching up. All right, Woo, how are we looking here? Pretty good, kind of been in the zone for a little bit. The idea here is that we're just making stuff, right? We're not not trying to be uh, too perfect, trying to learn a thing or two, trying to get some practice. All right, now I'm gonna go dig around and try to get my teeth model that I made for the Frankenstein. Um, always good to save your little model bits and stuff like that. So I think it's going to help me finish up the mouth too, is to grab those teeth. And then, so we'll just import them into the scene and kind of work them into position. And, uh, and then I think we're getting pretty close on wrapping up the sculpt. I think, you know, polishing the forms, adding the little lines, those finishing touches are going to be fun, but those are generally like less challenging than trying to get the overall forms, the primary shapes, secondary shapes, and the kind of likeness. Again, we're not going for pinpoint accuracy, but you know, we're trying to make it look like a smiling girl. That's the whole point, right? So I'm gonna go get those teeth now. All right, so back over here, uh, I just loaded in my teeth Z tool and then I'm gonna append it. Whoop. Okay, let's see, probably like this. Maybe we rotate it a little bit. And the scale, I think we can go a little bit Bigger. I'm gonna blunt these teeth a little bit. A little bit of an underbite here. It's a little bit open. All right, so you can kind of see already now that we put that in there that the front view looking okay and the side view is looking a little bit weird, right? So now we're gonna try to get these lips to wrap around the teeth somewhat. So as with the eyes and kind of any major major facial feature, but. In this case, with the teeth in the mouth, I think uh, some things become immediately evident that they are wrong. So trying to find where the teeth would be sitting in the skull and uh, and what kind of shape that would make the mouth take. You know, by checking your reference, you can just kind of see uh, how much of the teeth that you're seeing, you know, where they sit. And uh, overall, it just really gives you all the cues you need to refine the lip shape. It's going to be almost impossible to make perfect lips without anything in there uh, because as you can kind of see with my expression some parts of the lips are kind of smushing and wrapping around around the front of the teeth and then the sides of the mouth are being pulled by the facial muscles so it just helps having the teeth in there also trying to get the teeth size uh, is uh, is important so in general it's just really a, kind of a creepy joker smile right there but uh, in general it just helps get the shape right so we're at a point now where I'm getting ready to refine and in some cases I even want to make big changes. Instead of keeping this dynamics the whole time, we're gonna I'm gonna call it a little bit of an audible here. I'm gonna show you a technique that I use all the time. I don't know if this is worth a separate video or not, but I'm just gonna go in and do it real quick. So this is what I would normally do. I'm gonna use Z Remesher to create a new mesh and I'm gonna project the mesh I have right now onto it so that what I end up with is a mesh that has a nice flow to it. It has subdivision levels, and it looks exactly like my DynaMesh version that I have right now. I want that nice clean mesh so that I can smooth and start to do details, 
And also I wanna be able to work with subdivision levels so I can go up and down and kind of manipulate the face. That type of freedom I don't have exactly with Dynamesh, uh, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a process now where I duplicate and I reproject. So I'm just gonna do it right now. Again, I don't wanna overcomplicate things, so I'm just gonna do it real quick. Uh, but you'll see how in the end, by remeshing, uh, it's gonna give us so much more freedom and overall a nicer mesh. I'll just turn off these other meshes right now. So we'll just have the one that we're dealing with. I'm just gonna simplify the inside of the mouth. We don't need all this detail. I'm gonna have solo on so that we can watch this the whole time. I'll just full screen this so you can kind of see. So you'll see in my subtool palette here, I'm gonna duplicate now. So I've got two, still have solo on. So we're only looking at one. Then I'm gonna use Z remesher. I'm gonna keep symmetry on because that will make it uh, a symmetrical topology, which is what I want. I'll start out with one and we'll see what this gets us. Boom, it gets us a sad clown, aw, sad clown. So this is what we get, okay. I think I'm gonna try two, see what we get with that. Okay, so we've got a little bit more detailed sad clown. All right, I'm gonna try this. So if I turn off polyframe, this is our new mesh, right? If I hit divide, I'm at subdivision level four now. And now remember the only thing visible is my original mesh. So if I come into project, I turn off blur because I want it to be identical and I hit project, boom, it just projects the other one. So now since I have solo on, you'll see if I, if I click different things in the subtool palette, that's what we see, right? So this is our new mesh and this is our old mesh. You can't even tell a difference, which is exactly what we wanted. And now we have subdivision so I can drop down I can go up and I can go even higher and I can smooth this out now and I can make, I can drop this down, right? So now I'm on subdivision level one and I can make these big changes and then I go back up, it looks the same, right? So now we have a lot more freedom. So this remeshing process is hugely important to me. I do it all the time and I strongly recommend you get familiar with it if, if you're not already. Usually when I show it to people, it looks confusing the first time, but you just do it a couple of times and you get it. Being able to drop in the lower subdivision level and work on the big overall volume without losing detail is huge. That's why I love sculpting with subdivisions. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit. I'm gonna just refine the overall shape and then uh, I think then we'll move to fiber mesh, do some hair. All right, so now that we have subdivisions, we're just gonna be refining overall the forms that we already did. So you're gonna see I'm gonna jump around a lot. Um, lots of move brush, lots of clay brush still. And uh, and yeah, I'm just going to work on each area because I really want to refine the shapes that we already have. So it's going to be about doing things a little bit more slowly, uh, a little bit more meticulous because the changes that we're making is smaller now. Um, I'm going to make some of the teeth asymmetrical real quick too so that it looks a little bit more natural. And you saw me uh, do a quick render just so I could see the face with some shadows and a little bit more natural to look at so I can kind of judge you know, how it's looking. So uh, even doing huge changes right now, you know, big proportion changes. That's another beauty of, of subdivisions uh, that I can go all the way down to low levels and make big, big changes to the primary forms, primary shapes. And then I can bounce all the way back up and I can clean up some wrinkles. Just like be sure not to go too crazy though, because, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I feel a little bit insane. The fact that you can change anything at any time, you know, you definitely want to be trying to move forward. So... I'm always trying to be conscious of that and um, and trying to commit when I can. But if I do see a problem where I think I could make a quick improvement to the overall shapes, then I'll, I'll do that. Um, here you see not only the clay tubes brush, but damn standard, which I'm going to be using a lot. And, uh, you know, classic brush for doing fine lines and wrinkles. And it's a way for me to, you know, really create nice, clean form transitions in some of these wrinkles. Also, you know, trying to improve the form. I'm hoping, you know, I, towards the end of these stages, I'm improving proportion and likeness. And then I'm hope, hopefully also making everything less muddy. You know, I want the forms to be smooth and clean. And you can see now in parts like the cheek and everything, still a little bit of the lumpiness, a little bit of the muddiness. And, uh, and that's just because I haven't fully committed uh, to the shapes yet. But now I'm laying in the, what will become wrinkles for the squint. And uh, again, using damn standard for that. So 
just a way for me to quickly place it in. Similar to the wrinkles on the mouth, I start real harsh to try to get the position and then we can work on the forms around it and we can always wash it out if we think it's too, too sharp, too deep. You see how much I jump around. Um, made a big change to the nose now too. And uh, not only jumping around the areas that I'm working on, but moving the camera. So as, as I'm sure you've seen all the times, so it can be a little bit disorienting when we're fast like this. You know, this is probably like eight times the speed. So it's definitely uh, not this chaotic, but probably still chaotic. Uh, if you were just watching, you know, the sculpt. So I'm going to work on this for a bit and then I'm going to go off script uh, right now. Here we go. So now it's asymmetrical, you know, especially with these fine lines, you don't want to make this too perfectly symmetrical because it'll, it'll just be so obvious that there'll be some kind of a butterfly effect. So uh, I'm starting to break symmetry now and uh, make slightly different characteristics in the wrinkles and the squint. So hoping that that will also add to my believability just the naturalism, uh, but also, you know, saving a ton of time by using symmetry. All right. So now we're just kind of, we're, we're coming up on my time that, uh, I set aside for myself. So we're going to have to kind of speed round it. Uh, why don't I start by doing a little bit of like some render settings for the angle. Let's do 20 and the rays will do 40. So it's just going to make the, the shadow a little bit nicer. It's going to take a little bit longer to render, but here we go. So I think this is gonna have to be good enough for now. You know, not perfect, not perfect, but I think uh, it's gonna be good enough. Good enough, right? Okay, let's do some fiber mesh. All right, so we're gonna pause that right there. We're gonna pick this up in the next video, which I'll drop later this week. Um, this is the bulk of the sculpting part though. Just a little recap, we drop in, this is uh, where we're at right now. So this is just the sculpt. I'd say it's like 85 to 90% there. This is where I'm gonna start making the hair, which is kind of a lot more new topics. So I thought there'd be a natural break here where the next video we're gonna cover a lot of fiber mesh things and hair. And then we'll do our final polish pass on the sculpt itself and then we'll make an image. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video, you know, the first part of this new project. Definitely got away from me. I'm trying to make these smaller, but I asked social media, you know, all the people that follow me, um, you know, what do you want to see? Do you want to see a longer form video? And most of the people that follow me want to see longer form videos, which is cool. So I think moving forward, those kinds of videos, I'll make long ones, and I'll make short ones. This is going to be two videos that are probably around 30 minutes. Uh, but anyways, let me know what you think about the video. Um, did you like, you know, the extra cutting and stuff? Was that more entertaining? Uh, would you prefer me going back to the old way where it's just sped up and I talk over it? You know, just give me some uh, insight in what you like and didn't like so I can hopefully make better content. And uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Stay tuned for the next video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.